This episode of Against the Odds is brought to you by Card Kingdom. To pick up the deck and support the show, follow the link in the description box down below. Hello, everyone. It's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So last week, on our Against the Odds poll, it was Curse of Misfortunes coming out on top. So while next week we will be kicking off War of the Spark season with all the sweet new cards once they release. Today, we are heading to modern to play a deck I'm calling Enduring Curses. Basically, looking to use Curse of Misfortune to assemble some really powerful curse locks and eventually use it to tutor up curses and win the game. So, a quick reminder before we break down Enduring Curses for Modern. If you enjoy this deck and you enjoy Against the Odds in general, it would be so sweet of you if you could take a second, click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk some curses, starting with the winning card, Curse of Misfortune. So Curse of Misfortune is pretty simple. Five mana, curse, so it's an aura that enchants a player, in this case our opponent, and then at the beginning of our upkeep, we get to search our library for a curse that doesn't have the same name as a curse already attached to the enchanted player. So you can only tutor up each curse once, essentially, and and put it on the battlefield attached to that player. So Curse of Misfortune is essentially a every turn tutor, but only for curses, and you can't double up and keep getting the same curses. So this is the centerpiece of our deck. We're looking to get it down and use it to tutor up specific combinations of curses in general, but also just some rawly powerful curses that can win us the game. So to go with Curse of Misfortunes, we also have Enduring Ideal. So Enduring Ideal, it does kind of two things in this deck. First off, it's a way we can find our Curse of Misfortunes. It's just a 7 mana sorcery that lets us tutor for enchantment, put it on the battlefield. It does have epic, so for the rest of the game we can't cast spells. Uh, so this is a way we can find a Curse of Misfortunes. The other thing is, with Curse of Misfortunes, we don't really care about the epic part. We get Enduring Ideal. So with the epic, not only do we not cast spells the rest of the game, we get a copy of Enduring Ideal every turn for the rest of the game. Assuming we use Enduring Ideal to find Curse of Misfortunes, that means every single turn, we're tutoring up an enchantment with Enduring Ideal, tutoring up a curse with Curse of Misfortunes, which means we just kind of run away with the game even though we can't cast spells anymore. We're getting two free, very expensive, very powerful enchantments, one curse, one curse or non-curse, every single turn. So that is kind of step one of the deck. Find a Curse of Misfortunes, get it on the battlefield, either just drawing it naturally or with Enduring Ideal, and then we start tutoring up our curses. So we have two curses curse packages. One of them is more specifically for creatures. The other is more for spell decks. So for creature decks, what we're trying to assemble is Curse of Deathhold, which gives all creatures the curse player controls negative one, negative one, along with Overwhelming Splendor, which has a lot of text on it. But the big thing is it turns all the creatures that the curse player controls into one one. So Overwhelming Splendor plus Curse of Deathhold means all of our opponent's creatures are one ones with no abilities that are also getting negative one, negative one, which essentially just locks all of our opponent's creatures out of the game. Any creature our opponent has or plays is just immediately going to die. So that's the creature plan. Lock out the creatures, Curse of Deathhold, Overwhelming Splendor, Tutor Up by Curse of Misfortunes. For spell decks, it's a little jankier. We have Curse of Exhaustion, which makes it so the curse player can only cast one spell each turn. And then Possibility Storm, which isn't actually a curse, but combos with Curse of Exhaustion, because whenever a player casts a spell, they exile and then reveal cards from their library until they hit a card of the same type, then they cast that spell. Well, technically, if you have a Curse of Exhaustion on you and you cast a spell, Possibility Storm just locks you out of casting spells from your hand because the card that you would cast from Possibility Storm is technically the second spell you're trying to cast for the turn. So Curse of Exhaustion locks it. And this is another point where something like Enduring Ideal is important because Curse of Misfortune, it can get our Curse of Exhaustion. It can't find our Possibility Storm. So... For example, how this works, let's say we cast Enduring Ideal, we get Curse of Misfortunes on our next upkeep. If we make it one more turn, Enduring Ideal can get Possibility Storm, Curse of Misfortune gets Curse of Exhaustion, and our opponent's locked out of casting spells for the rest of the game. So that is Creature Plan, that is Spell Plan, then we have the I Win the Game Plan, and for that we turn to two more curses, Curse of Thirst, 
Pretty simple. At the beginning of the curse player's upkeep, Curse of Thirst deals damage to that player equal to the number of curses attached to them. So let's say we already have a couple of curses from one of our locks. We have a Curse of Misfortunes. We tutor up our Curse of Thirst just by itself that's four damage each turn. And theoretically, we can have multiple Curse of Misfortunes, multiple locks going. So it can be like seven or eight damage each turn, which means Curse of Thirst is going to clean up the game and kill our opponent in a few short turns. If that's not enough, we also of cruel reality a very expensive curse but also a powerful one at the beginning of the curse player's upkeep that player has to sacrifice a creature or planeswalker if they can't they lose five life so if we have like our creature lockout then cruel reality because our opponent's not going to be able to sacrifice a creature probably doesn't have any planeswalkers is just take five a turn throw in a curse of thirst and that means it's only a couple turns of curse damage to actually kill our opponent so that is the main plan of our deck get a curse of misfortunes depending on the matchup either lockout spells with Curse of Exhaustion Possibility Storm, or in a creature matchup, lock up creatures with Overwhelming Splendor and Cursed as old, and then find one of our Curse of Thirst or Cruel Realities, or both of them, to close out the game with Curse Damage. Otherwise, we have some ramp spells just to get us to our stuff quicker. Boros Signet, Orzhov Signet, also Lotus Blooms, get us to our Curse of Misfortune. If we need to, get us to our Enduring Ideal to find Curse of Misfortunes. Then we have Ghostly Prison and Sphere of Safety, just additional ways to stay alive against aggro creatures one of the drawbacks of curse of misfortunes it is it is kind of slow it's five mana and it doesn't do anything right away on our next turn we get to tutor up our first curse so there is a risk that we just get run over uh these cards help make sure we stay alive against creature decks for spell decks we have rune halo and also ley line of sanctity to protect us from burn spells from combo -y spells like conflagrate from dredge or grape shot from storm rune halo can also shut down creatures it just gives us protection from when whatever card we name. Otherwise, rest in peace, some main deck graveyard hate, tutorable, blood moon, just a one of, it's not our main plan, but it's a nice one of tutor target with enduring ideal if we're playing Tron or something. Mana base wise, Nykthos, another one of, can make a bunch of mana with all of our white enchantments. Field of Ruin gives us a way to deal with Tron lands, some fetch lands, some shock lands, some basic lands. As far as the sideboard, Greater Oromancy comes in to protect our curses, uh, gives all of our enchantment shroud, so if our opponent wants to kill our Curse of Misfortunes. They first have to kill Greater Oromancy, four copies of Chalice of the Void, which is really good in certain matchups, and our deck naturally doesn't have any one drops, so it doesn't hurt us at all to play Chalice on one. So if we're playing one of the matchups where Chalice is devastating, especially with the London Mulligan rule in effect. We can bring in four copies, London Mulligan into it, hopefully use it to lock our opponent out. Sorcerer's Spyglass to deal with things like Planeswalkers, which can blow up all of our curses. Something like Karn is bad, Ugin is bad, Oblivion Stone is bad, Nahiri is bad, Wrath of Gods for creatures, Aura of Silence, kind of our bad Sony Silence, but allows us to still use our Mana Rocks. Another Curse of Exhaustion for the combo matchups, along with Damping Sphere, more Rested Pieces for the Graveyard decks, and that is Enduring Curses for modern and that's our against the odds deck for this week so this is going to be interesting we'll see how good this is the thing i'm excited about is our locks are good if we can actually assemble our locks in the right matchup they are devastating like against creature decks uh, like 99 percent of them are not going to be overwhelming splendor and curse of death's hold against spell decks a huge percentage of them not going to get out from under possibility storm with curse of exhaustion our finishers are good once we get going, the main concern is the slowness of the deck, and that's why we have all the ghostly prisons, the rune halos, the ramp to try to speed things up, because that is the main challenge. The deck is very powerful, but is it going to be fast enough to do its thing before we get combo killed, or run over by a bunch of aggro creatures, or burnt out by a bunch of lightning bolts? That's the challenge of the curse deck, so rather than debating whether it'll work or not, let's get to the video, gameplay, see if it does in practice. Thank Thank you so much for watching i hope you all enjoy it and i'll be back in a bit with a wrap up all right against the odds time we are cursing it up in modern <laughs> enduring curses waiting for war of the spark to finally release to play some sweet sweet new cards but in the meantime cursing them and ooh, okay uh this looks fine i mean lotus bloom signet we don't have our tutory curse, but we do have enduring ideal to find our tutory curse to set up our lock. So, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. Seems about right. This card would be annoying, but I mean, 
this hand's good against creature decks no matter what. Just Ghostly Prison Curse of Death Hold is good against creature decks. So we'll see what we're up against. Yeah, we'll keep. Opponent. Marsh Flats. And passes. Hopefully. Uh, so let's suspend Lotus Bloom. Play Marsh Flats. Pass the turn. Opponent. Cracks Marsh Flats. Watery Grave. Hmm. That could mean counters. Thought Scours. Okay, so opponent's playing Death Shadow by the Lux. And we'll see if we can resolve our stuff. Polluted Delta. Cracks Polluted Delta. Watery Grave. Down to 14. And Jace. Ooh, which is going to flip. Okay. Well, Crack Marsh Flats. Grab a Godless Shrine. Tapped. Untap. Lotus Bloom. Taken down. Now play a Plains. Play Ores of Signet. This Jace is an annoyance, though we don't have a super good answer for it at the moment. Opponent. Loots with Jace, flips Jace. Discards a Death Shadow, interesting. Maybe our opponent's Death Shadow flooded. Kinda expecting we just get Thought Seized here. Yeah. Alright. Jace. Four Thought Seize. Thought Seize. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Takes a Ghostly Prison. Plays a Swamp. And Gurmag Angler. Yep. We don't get to Enduring Ideal this turn. Unfortunately. Opponent. Passes. Lotus Bloom taken down. Well, play Boro Signet. Arid Mesa. Crack it. Take a Plains. And Ghostly Prison. Which, I mean, at least it slows our opponent down. The main question is going to be, can they counter Enduring Ideal next turn? If they can't, or Thought sees it, if we actually resolve it, then we should be good, because we can get our Tutor Curse, and then proceed to go from there. If they can counter it, it's a little little worse. Opponent. Yeah, it's in with Angler. Hits us. I guess the other question is, do we have to... Hmm. Maybe we just don't cast Enduring Ideal if our opponent leaves up Stubborn Denial Mana? Opponent passes. Leaving up the Stubborn Denial Mana. Lotus Bloom, taken down. Well, boy, this is tough. What do we do? Well, here comes Lotus Bloom. Field of Ruin. Hmm. <laughs> what do we do? What do we do? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, uh, let's play Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin, Watery Grave. Opponent floats a mana. Mm-hmm. We will take a swamp. And opponent takes an island. <sighs> well, we gotta go for it. We gotta get our curses going. During ideal. There's the summer denial. Yep. Well, we tried, we tried, we tried. Opponent untaps. Bloodstain mire. Cracks it. Blood crypt. Untapped. Thought sees. Takes up Jace. Gets in with Gurmag Angler, down to eight. Well, we need to draw something here. Yup, opponent doing their thing. Hits us to eight. Passes. We draw nothing. Well, pass the turn. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Opponent. Untaps. Steam vents. Untapped. Takes up Jace. Yup. Opponents are on a lot of mana. Enough mana that they can keep attacking through this ghostly prison. Those thought seizes were brutal. Took away a lot of stuff that would have been helpful here. Opponent gets in, down to three, and... Opponent passes. We draw Curse of Exhaustion. Not helpful enough, and we scoop it up. Well, there is good news. Now that we know what our opponent's doing, we actually have a lot of cards that are good against this deck. Chalice of the Void is great. Leyline is great. Our one Blood Moon is great. Our rest in pieces are actually pretty good too. I don't know if we can bring in more though. We don't have a whole lot that we want to cut is a big problem. Maybe like a couple of ghostly prisons. A hmm. What can we cut here? Maybe we gotta cut the signets? That's a little awkward, but alright, let's cut the signets. Yeah, let's run it like that. Leyline or resolving chalice, or preferably both. Those are our best. Our best early game cards. We get to play first. Well, okay. This hand is interesting. 
We're basically keeping it because we have a ley line, and ley line is actually pretty good against our opponent's deck. Uh, the rest of this hand doesn't do much of anything, but it does have mana, and there are things we can draw into, and we're not going to get torn up by thought seizes. Bonet. Untaps. Polluted Delta. And uh, passing. Maybe passing. All right. Officially passing. Cragmarsh Flats. Grab a Blood Crypt. Tapped. Opponent passes. Ooh. All right. Well, I mean, we're going for it. Actually, let's wait a turn. Pass the turn. We don't want to get stubborn denialed here. I think waiting one more turn is best. If we can have Leyline and Chalice on one, that's a lot of protection. Watery Grave. Untapped. Thought Scour. Ooh, Mill Snapcaster Angler. Okay. Watery Grave. Untapped. Down to 15. Serum Visions. Well, odds of getting down this Chalice are increasing. Opponent passing. Well, we untap Arid Mesa. Uh, play of Plains. Chalice on one. With mana to pay for Stubborn Denial. Opponent Thought Scours. Mills. Well, we pass the turn. Our opponent should have a lot of blank cards in their hand now. Opponent untaps. Blood Crypt. Man, we could draw a... Hmm. Blood Moon? Just to, like, have the, the lock of locks? At some point, we want to get our curses going. Alright, Grimag Angler. Opponent. Passing. Eh, yeah, let's see what we draw. Ghostly Prison. Um... Yeah, so let's just Ruined Halo on Gurmag Angler. Playing Arid Mesa. Pass the turn. Well, come on! A uh, tutory curse! That's what we need! If we can find a way to start getting our curses going, we should be able to close out this game. We really need... Alright, opponent plays a Bobble. Sure. We really need Curse of Misfortunes. That's the card we want most. Eventually, our opponent will probably draw a way to blow up this Chalice to the Void. And then they can start doing some stuff. Ooh, Bitter Blossom. Well, thankfully, Ghostly Prison is a pretty good answer to Bitter Blossom. Opponent. No attacks. Doesn't do anything. Well, Crack Arid Mesa. Godless Shrine, tapped. Untap. Opponent draws. Hmm. Uh, I don't know what to do now. Do we Possibility Storm? We could spin Ghostly Prison into something good, but our opponent could also start casting stuff. Oh my goodness. Uh, I don't know what... Okay, let's, let's just play Ghostly Prison. Let's wait. Opponent. Stubborn Denial countered. Yep. The power of Chalice. Zagred Foundry tapped past the turn. We might just run out this possibility storm in the future. I'm really not sure. Our opponent might kill themselves to Bitter Blossom before they can kill us. They can't attack with that many that many tokens. Thanks to Ghostly Prison. Opponent gets a swamp. And passes. Ooh. Ooh. Does our opponent actually have something? Come on, another Grimag Angler. <laughs> into this ruined halo we're staying alive we're not cursing yet but we are staying alive Tessica okay opponent oh cruel reality well um do we even want a possibility storm eh let's let's do it it sounds fun I don't know if this, this might actually kill us cause it lets our opponent cast oh they actually have a counter all right, opponent has a real counter. Well, play a planes, pass the turn. Opponent. They are going to start getting in damage, and this Bitter Blossom does shut down Cruel Reality. We're going to need to draw something at some point. Opponent, combat. Attacks. Yup. Well, that Disdainful Stroke was pretty good. Opponent hits us for four. Another... Another Rune Halo would be good. 
opponent passes. We draw. Oh boy. Enduring ideal that we need one more mana to cast. If we do find it and resolve it, things get better. But our clock is running a bit short. We have two seven drops, but no mana. Or one mana short. Opponent. Combat. Gets in for four. They're also suspiciously leaving up two mana every turn. Down to ten. So they could technically, I guess, have another Disdainful Stroke. Well, all right. Curse of Mitch Fortunes. Curse you. Who resolves? Okay. Oh, boy. Well, we will see. Opponent. Untaps. Bitter Blossom. I guess there's a risk of getting burnt out here. Also going to be really close. We do have our curse going. Opponent, combat. Going to hit us to six. I guess the chalice is kind of protecting us to some extent from burn. Wow, no attacks leaves up the mana. Interesting. Going to try to activate Tassiger, I guess. All right, so curse of misfortune. We get a curse. Curse number one will be... Um... Yeah, let's just Overwhelming Splendor. Curse of Misfortune. Target you. <laughs> Pono said, LOL. <laughs> and they've had enough! Alright, well, that worked! Uh, okay. We didn't curse super quickly, but we managed to get down enough protection that our curses did come through in the long run, which is pretty good. That's what we're looking for. Man, that possibility storm would have been interesting. Uh, do we want to change anything else? Yeah. Now that we've seen Bitter Blossom, the ghostly prisons actually look a little better than I thought. But it's really hard to cut much. Maybe we can like, go down an Enduring Ideal for one more ghostly prison. Let's try it like that. Seems fine. Opponent on the play for game number three. Well, okay. We get to start with a ley line. That's one of the cards we're looking for. Rune Halo gives us some defense. Eh, we'll keep. Ley line is good enough to keep. At least it shuts down all the discard. Yeah. Ley line, go. Opponent. Street Wraith, cycled. Bloodstained Mire, cracks it. There should be a lot of dead cards. This deck plays a lot of discard. And Leyline shuts it off. Opponent, Serum Visions. All right, setting things up. Bottom and top. Opponent. Ugh. Second Leyline, not as helpful. Godless Shrine, go. Opponent plays a Swamp. And Bitter Blossom. All right, that is a thing that's going to damage us. Does not care about Rune Halo either. Another Rune Halo. That's unfortunate. Actually, should we play a Rune Halo? Yeah, let's wait. Let's wait and see what our opponent does. Opponent untaps. We don't really know what we want to target yet. We are going to need a Ghostly Prison or to get down this Curse of Death's Hold to stop these fairy rogues. Curse of Death's Hold does do it. Opponent. Passing. Hmm. Still not sure what we want protection from. Hmm. Eh, let's just feel the ruin. Pass the turn. We do want another black source to be able to cast a uh, curse of death's hold. Opponent. Bitter blossom. Makes a token. So we are gonna start getting beaten down by these fairy rogues. Opponent. Getting in, getting in. Yeah. Down to nineteen. Ruined Halo doesn't stop tokens because tokens are not cards, technically. Well, we're going to Field the Ruin. Blow up Watery Grave. Not because it actually stops much of anything, but because it does get us a second Black Source. Nykthos would be interesting with this hand. We draw Planes. Well, play the Planes. Uh... Does our opponent know that Ruined Halo doesn't... Let's Ruined Halo. Let's see if our opponent will counter this or try to. Maybe they don't know that it doesn't stop tokens. All right. Um, name Death Shadow, I guess. Pass the turn. 
Well, the question's going to be, can we get Curse of Death's Hold to resolve? That is the overarching question. Or can we draw into, like, ghostly prison type effects? That would also be helpful. Those are the cards we're looking for here. Opponent. Also, our one Nykthos would be insane. Cracks it. Blood Crypt. Tapped. Cracks it. Steam Vents. Also tapped. Bitter Blossom. The clock increases. And we don't have a way to really punish our opponent. We don't have a fast... Ugh. Curse of Misfortunes would also be okay if it resolved. We have some good draws. These fairies are worrying, though. Opponent. Gets in, gets in. Hits us. Yeah. Down to 17. Watery Grave. Tapped. Opponent. Passing. We draw planes. I think we gotta wait at least one turn for Curse of Death's Hold. So let's play a planes. Play Rune Halo on Gurmag Angler. We're stopping everything except for these Bitter Blossom tokens. Bone it. Untaps. Bitter Blossom. Makes a dork. Down to nine. That shadow. Ugh. That does turn on Stubborn Denial, full price mode. Opponent gets in. Down to 14. Opponent. Well, play a mountain. Play Curse of Death's Old. They have the Stubborn Denial. Well, uh, we'll see. That's not good. That is not good at all. Opponent. Bitter Blossom. Token. We're running out of time. Opponent, combat. If they have, like, Snapcaster... Ugh, hits us for four. Oh, we're running short. We're running short on time. Down to ten. Opponent. Passes. Leaving up all their mana. We draw. Lotus Bloom. Not helpful. Well, Arid Mesa. Crack it. We gotta go for it. There's not a, not a choice. Grab a Plains. Enduring Ideal. See if they have another counter. Stubborn Denial. Oh, goodness. That is a brutality. Well, now we are very much down to one turn. We have to draw something to protect us this turn. And we do not have very many options. Opponent gets in, hits us. Four. Passes. We draw a... Ley line that doesn't do it, and that was a lot of counters. That was many, many counters. Huh, <sighs> sweet. All right, against the odds time, we are cursing it up in modern. And this hand, ugh, we have Curse of Misfortune, but nothing else. No ramp, doesn't come down until turn five. I think we got a mulligan. Oh dear. Hmm. All right, mulligan. Well, I guess we'll keep this. Put back Overwhelming Splendor. Put back Ghostly Prison. Marsh Flats go. So, not a great hand, but it is... I would consider it semi-functional. Relic of Progenitus. Oh, Scred, A. Eh? Well, hmm. Uh, let's just untap. Play a Plains. Pass the turn. So, opponent's going to be most likely Blood Mooning us. Good news is... If we fetch properly, we can play around Blood Moon. Oh, Snow-Covered Plains. Well, that's a little worse. That means Nahiri, potentially. And Nahiri means bad times. Arid Mesa, go. Yeah, Nahiri's a huge problem. Opponent cracks Relic. Untaps. Arid Mesa. Cracks it. Gets a Mountain. Uh, crack Marsh Flats. Grab a Swamp. Crack Arid Mesa. Grab a Plains. Blood Moon down. Well, I mean, I guess we go Sleep Prison. The problem is Nahiri just snipes our enchantments like crazy. Opponent. Blood Moon number two. Well, that's not too bad. Opponent passes. We draw land. Well, Blood Crypt. Go. We are one land away from Curse of Misfortune, which means if no Nahiri, we can actually do things. We don't care much about Blood Moon, really. Opponent. I guess it's stopping us from casting this curse at the moment. What do you got, opponent? <laughs> Blood Moon 3. That is Blood Moon Tron. Enduring Ideal. We'll pass the turn. Hmm. Awkward. Opponent. 
<laughs> Four blood moons. All right, Lotus Bloom, go. Bonet. Relic, sure, passes. We draw... Land? There's a land. All right, so now we will... Curse of Misfortunes. Pass the turn. Opponent cracks. Draws a card. Land. Cough of the Hammer. Okay, that's fine. It's not an Ahiri, so that's fine. Untaps a mountain. Opponent. Passes. Well, Lotus Bloom. Curse of Misfortunes. We get a... Uh, let's just take Cruel Reality. Get rid of the cough. Play Curse of Thirst. This is kind of working. Pass the turn. So opponent, Sax Cough, takes three curse damage. Land. And... Pian Karenalar. I think we get to set up the hard lock. Lotus Bloom comes down, right? All right. So we get a Lotus Bloom. Curse of Misfortunes. Grabs Curse of Exhaustion. One, two, three, four. So crack this for white. Enduring Ideal. Okay, opponent bolts. Yup. We will take Possibility Storm. Play Sacred Foundry. So now our opponent can't cast spells. They're getting double cursed every turn. This is exactly how we wanted to go with curses. This is the dream. The cursed dream. Opponent. Yup. Yup. Down to 12. Sacks a creature. Plays a land. Tries to... Oh. Alright. Tries to cast a spell. Gets exiled. Worm Coil gets exiled. Opponent. Gets in for two. Yup. Down to 13. Well, let's tutor up a curse. I think we're down to our last one. Overwhelming Splendor. Enduring Ideal. Gets us a... Hmm. Yeah, I guess we just take Leyline. Play the land. Why can't we cast spells? Uh, Alright. Pass the turn. That's odd. Oh! Never mind. I am what you would call not very smart. Opponent plays a land. Enduring Ideal, of course, is why we can't cast spells. But we have the curse lock set up so well that I don't think it matters. Opponent gets in for one. Uh-huh. Sure. Passes. We're out of curses, but we get to Enduring Ideal. Enduring Ideal finds us... Um... Eh, let's just go sleep prison. No curses left to find. Play the land. Pass the turn. Opponent. Cool reality. Get rid of the last creature, and opponent is done and done, and that was pretty good for the curses. That is pretty much exactly what we wanted to happen with the curse plan. Uh, okay, so, hmm, what do we want against this deck? Probably the Sorceress Spyglasses. We can go down the Blood Moon, probably trim a Ghostly Prison. Go down, probably go up Aura of Silence. I'm a little worried that our opponent would have something like Leyline of Sanctity, which would lock us out of cursing our opponent. So we need a way to deal with that. Probably Greater Oromancy too, over like maybe one, maybe we can go down one more Ghostly Prison. Actually, how relevant is our Leyline of Sanctity? It's not that relevant. I don't think we want all of them. Let's go down a couple Leylines of Sanctity. Keep the ghostly prison and bring in a wrath of god. All right, let's try it like that. That seems fine. Well, the curse plan went super well in game one. Um, okay, I guess this is fine. Leyline, little. I imagine our opponents probably got to take out their blood moons. Maybe not. Opponent passes. Well, planes. You. Opponent. Arid Mesa and passes. Well, play field of ruin. Play greater oromancy. Pass the turn. Opponent cracks. Planes. Magma Jet. Does a bit of scrying. Yeah. Leaves one on top. Another mountain. Yeah, they left in the Blood Moons. That is annoying for the time being. Opponent passes. Well, play Blood Crypt. Play Ghostly Prison. Pass the turn. Mountain for our opponent. And Koth. Okay. Not actually super threatening. Opponent passes. I'll play Nykthos. And Ghostly Prison. Pass the turn. Opponent. Yeah, turns out a mountain. I guess this will kill us eventually. Opponent attacks. Hits us. Ugh. This Blood Moon actually is kind of ruining our day. Possibility Storm. Pass the turn. Because we can't cast any of the black cards in our hand, and we actually have a lot of double white cards, so this is actually pretty bad. Opponent. Blood Moon. 
swings into a blood moon part two so our swamp is good something like orzov signet is okay anything that we can cast to activate this possibility storm is helpful p and karen flips into eternal scourge uh-huh opponent passes cannot cast ruined halo at the moment pass the turn yeah this is this is annoying opponent land mana cough untaps possibility storm into more coughs what was the uh, what was cast it was a nahiri i think All right another cough opponent's down to one card untaps a mountain possibility storm into a pn karen opponent passes Ugh. we just can't cast anything yeah maybe we shouldn't have kept this hand our opponent seems to be playing mono basic so we're having a really hard time getting out from under this blood moon surprisingly opponent last card is a tear it swings into a scred that doesn't do anything mm -hmm. opponent combat can get in with one creature hits for three yep oh come on deck come on deck give us something castable or at least a planes down to 13 untaps passes oh my goodness it's a godless shrine <laughs> our deck is not doing well in the casting of things department lightning bolt flips into a lightning bolt it doesn't do anything okay untaps a mountain opponent combat attacks we're down to nine yup we draw something we can't cast well, I am amazed by how much this Blood Moon got us. We're actually built with Blood Moon in mind, but we kept a hand that I guess maybe we shouldn't have kept in the face of Blood Moon. Blood Moon into Rule of Law. And that actually, oddly, is the game. All right. Now we are locked under our own possibility storm, and our opponent will win eventually. Well, that was awkward. That was very awkward. Hmm. Well, run it back. Definitely, definitely, definitely worried about Nahiri. We saw Nahiri's in the deck. That is an issue. We can definitely play around Blood Moon. We just kept a hand that we had one white source, two field of ruins, and it didn't work out in the end. Maybe that was a hand we should not have kept. I don't know. It's, I guess it's close-ish. All right, we're on the play. Oh, this hand is so sketchy. I don't want to get mana screwed. All right. This hand's not bad. We will keep. We will put Rune Halo to the bottom. Put Leyline into play. Play a Plains. We would like a way to get a Black Source. Pass the turn. Mountain for our opponent. Relic of Progenitus. Sure. Well, Arid Mesa. Crack it. Grab a Plains. Sorcerer Spyglass. Name... Nahiri the Harbinger. Pass the turn. Sacred Foundry is good. That is super key for us because it means we get to Field of Ruin to get a Swamp, which is actually a huge deal. Field of Ruin. Pass the turn. Yeah, this is, this is major, major good. Magma Jet. Oh, this is even better. Okay. Opponent scries with Magma Jet, targeting themselves, and then we get to, well, they put cards on the bottom. We're going to do this anyway. Field of Ruin. Grab a Swamp. And now we're one land away from double curse of misfortune, and we don't care about Blood Moon. Opponent sacks a relic, draws a card, untaps, sure. Looking for lands, their hand is not very good. Mountain passes. So we will play a Godless Shrine, tapped, pass the turn. Curse of misfortune, incoming next turn, and then the fun begins. Opponent, land, so PN Karen Nalar can come down. Ooh, cough, okay. Cough can come down. That is a little scary. Well, play the planes, play Curse of Misfortune, target our opponent, pass the turn. Arid Mesa, opponent, PN Karen Nalar. This is a clock. This is a clock. Mountain down to 11. Yep. Well, we will curse. Step one, we take Overwhelming Splendor. Play Ghostly Prison. Play Greater Ormancy. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Next turn, we get to lock creatures of our opponents. And I think we might have cursed them. I think we might have got there. Opponent, combat, gets in for three. So we're down to eight. We are protected by Leyline. Gets in for two. All right, so down to nine. Yep, sure. Opponent, takes up Koth, passes. 
So next curse is Curse of Deshold, which gets rid of the creatures. Play second Curse of Misfortunes. Pass the turn. And we have our curse lock set up pretty well. Even if our opponent draws an artifact or enchantment destruction spell, the first one's got to go at Greater Oromancy, so they need two. Koth cannot do much. It can tick for mana, but that doesn't do much. Double Curse of Misfortune. Next curse, we will take a Curse of Thirst. Throw in, for good measure, a Cruel Reality. Play a Field of Ruin. And pass the turn. And that is Curses literally dominating this game. Potent. Gotta sack the Koth. No choice. Takes one, two, three, four, five, six from Curse of Thirst. Passes. Well, we get our last curse. We only have one more left. Number number seven. Curse of Exhaustion. No more to find. Pass the turn. Ponet. And that's lethal. Five from Cruel Reality. Seven from Curse of Thirst. And whoa! That was the cursiest of curse games. The deck can actually do some pretty sweet stuff when it gets going. That was very impressive. Whew, curses. Curses, curses. We cursed them. All right. Oh, uh, sweet. All right. Against the odds time, we are cursing it up in modern and... Uh, all right we'll keep this we have some defense depending on the matchup ether vial Ugh, spirits uh, i don't know if i like this um let's just godless shrine tapped pass the turn opponent taking a vial yeah windswept teeth cracks it so ghostly prison is something if it resolves opponent supreme phantom uh play a planes Ruined Halo. On Supreme Phantom. Pass the turn. Opponent. Vials in Mausoleum Wander. I guess that's good against Enduring Ideal. If we can't get down a curse that helps us here, opponent. Ugh. Geisa St. Draft. Okay. Grows Mausoleum Wander. Well, this is looking a little bad. Opponent gets in for three. Down to 17. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Passes. I'll play Field of Ruin, play Ghostly Prison. Pass the turn. The problem is Geist of St. Traff kind of gets a free attack because of the Angel, so our opponent can pay two for Geist of St. Traff, but they actually hit us for a million. Noble Hierarch. Combat. Gets in. Hmm. Yeah, that's a lot. Opponent pays. Hits us for eight. Yep. That is what you call a fast clock. And they can actually pay again because of this Noble Hierarch. Curse of Deshold. Yeah, we're not going to show our opponent anything else. They got it. We can play a Ghostly Prison, but they can pay. And then we can't crack this fetch, and there's not really an out. Yeah, this one feels like a tough one. Tough, tough, tough. Well, bring in Wrath of God. Jeez, that might be all we can do. Hmm. Go down the rest in pieces. Go up in Aura of Silence, I guess. Run it like that. Huh, not super confident, for sure. Well, we will play first. All right. I mean, we got our Curse of Misfortune. We don't really have any ramp, but planes go. Ghostly Prison can be helpful. Opponent. Mausoleum Wander. And passes. Well, mm, Marsh Flats. Go. Opponent. Combat. We take it. Down to 19. Well, Crack Marsh Flats. Grab a Godless Shrine, tapped. Untap. Play the mountain. Run out Ghostly Prison. Pass the turn. Opponent cracks. Hollowed Fountain, tapped. Horizon Canopy. Opponent. No attacks. Well, play a Plains. Play Boro Signet. All right, opponent Spell Quellers. Sure. I mean, I guess their plan was basically just to cast that on anything. Ideally, we'll draw a land for Curse of Thirst next turn, and that's our best draw. Opponent plays a land, goes to combat, and passes. Well, let's Orzhov Signet. Pass the turn. So next turn, we can actually play a real curse. Does our opponent have Collected Company? Cracks. Uh, hopefully, they do not. Land. Untapped. Feels like Collected Company. There is the Coco. Ugh, hits a Knight of Autumn. Yeah, that's, that is bad news. 
So now our opponent's free to attack, and I'm not sure this Curse of Misfortunes is going to be fast enough, even if it resolves. Oh dear, now it's definitely not going to be fast enough. Three, six, seven, eight. Oh, sweet Jesus. Uh, okay. Alright, well, uh, now we're out of outs. We don't actually have any, any way to get out of this. Our best draw would be Wrath of God. It's a curse. We're dead on board. Well, that one was rough. That was a rough combination. It feels like no matter what deck I play, I lose to spirits. Basically 100% of the time. Ouch. All right. Against the odds time are cursing it up in modern and, well, please no thoughtsies. All right. We have our Curse of Misfortune, which is good. Opponent, Godless Shrine tapped. Pass it. We wouldn't mind drawing a land. Well, Lotus Bloom, plain. Pass the turn. So, Lotus Bloom is going to let us cast our Curse of Misfortune on time. Hopefully, we draw mana to cast things before that. Overgrown Tomb, Dark Confidant. Lotus Bloom, ticking down. Overwhelming Splendor is not an ideal draw. Pass the turn. Dark Confidant gives our opponent a Maelstrom Pulse. Huh. So, that answers our Curse of Misfortune. That's not ideal. Scavenging ooze. Well, Lotus Bloom taking down. There's a Plains. Well, let's run out Ghostly Prison. Pass the turn. If our opponent kills this with... Huh, we might be okay. We might be okay. Opponent draws with Bob. Another Bob. Passes. Well, Lotus Bloom ticks down. If we draw a land, we get to an Enduring Ideal. Well, let's just... Uh... We just know there's a Maelstrom Pulse. So if we play Curse of Misfortune, it's going to die for no value. Let's rune Halo on Dark Confidant. Pass the turn. Opponent, two triggers. They should hit a land here. Kaya down to nine. Scavenging goes to seven. Well, maybe our opponent just does not hit land. Oh, does not hit lands. And, well, that wasn't the... <laughs> that was not the curse win, but... Uh, our opponent just bobbed themselves. Bobbed themselves hardcore. Alright, uh, that went well. So, opponent's playing Jund. So, I think, like, Greater Oromancy in, Sorceress Spyglass in. What do we go down? I guess it's technically Abzan. Hmm. Hmm, what do we got? Let's go down, like, a Ghostly Prison. One Enduring Ideal. And maybe one one rest in peace. Let's go one rest in peace. Rest in peace isn't even that good. Maybe we just don't play rest in peace and leave ghostly prison. All right, try it like that. So opponent will have ways to blow up our stuff, as we saw. So it's worth being aware of. Well, okay. Um, we'll keep. We got our curses. Planes. Opponent passes. Well, lotus bloom. Godless shrine tapped. Pass the turn. Wow. Opponent kept a one lander. All right, take down lotus bloom. Play Sacred Foundry tapped. Pass the turn. There's a forest for our opponent. Stony Silent. Well, I mean, that does stop our Lotus Bloom mana. Play Marsh Flats. The good news is we have enough lands that we can just cast these Curse of Looming Marsh for our opponent. Thought Seizes. Yep. Thankfully, we have two Curse of Misfortunes. Takes a Curse of Misfortunes and Tarmogoyf. Uh, let's take Blood Crip tapped. So we get a... Lotus Bloom, but it doesn't do anything with Stony Silence out. Cast Lotus Bloom. Ugh, another one. Well, Rune Halo on Tarmogoyf. Arid Mesa. Pass the turn? We don't have any way to get rid of this, right? Hmm. Yeah, let's just pass. Bone it. Combat. Passing. Well, okay. I guess the question's gonna be, do they have an answer for our Curse of Misfortunes? Grab a... Yeah, take Godless Shrine. That's fine. Untap. Draw a Plains. Play Nykthos. Yeah, I mean, we're going to run it out. If our opponent has an answer, they have an answer. They could have. Curse of Misfortunes. Pass the turn. Okay, pass the Goyf to get a Swamp, I assume. Yep. Untaps. Can they answer the curse? Liliana. Yep. Takes up. Well, we will discard Lotus Blue. Our Curse has this covered, though, because Curse gets to get Cruel Reality to get rid of Liliana. Yeah, take Cruel Reality. Play Curse of Thirst. Play a Plains. Pass the turn. See you later, Liliana of the Veil. Liliana of the Graveyard. 
<laughs> and then opponent takes three from our curses. And they keep coming. Opponent, do you have an answer? Fulminator Mage. Sure, I guess that gets rid of Nykthos. Sort of. Not really. Unless our opponent sacks it now. They choose not to. Uh, so we will take a Overwhelming Splendor. Sorry, Fulminator. An opponent! Cursed out of the game! See ya later! <laughs> Abs had expensive cards. And I mean, the curse plan is pretty effective. It does lose to things, but once it gets going, it can lock a deck out of the game pretty effectively. Uh, we just need a Curse of Possibility Storm. Not being able to tutor up Possibility Storm with our Curse of Misfortune. A little bit unfortunate, I guess you would say. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Uh... Against the odds time, we are cursing it up. Hmm, in modern, and we got lots of ley lines. <laughs> I guess we'll keep this. Hopefully it's a matchup where ley line does something, or maybe we draw, we could draw our one Nick though, so that would be sweet. Marsh flats go. Otherwise, we got a minute until we do much. Mountain, all burn. Lotus Bloom suspended. Arid Mesa, that, Lotus Bloom is a very good draw. Lotus Bloom, Lotus Bloom might let us just cast his true reality if we draw one more land. Opponent. Um, alright, play the Swamp. This might have been the perfect Ley Line matchup. Another mountain for our opponent. Arr, Apple Master. Well, crack Marsh Flats. Grab a Godless Shrine. Crack Marsh Flats. Grab a Plains. Rabble Master does make this cruel reality a little bit worse. Opponent makes a goblin. Yup. Gets in with a goblin. Hits us. Passes. Lotus Bloom. Take it down. Well, let's rune Halo on Rabble Master. Play a Arid Mesa. Pass the turn. Do we cruel reality? We'd rather find something else, but I mean, I guess it's okay. Opponent. Oh, Legion War Boss. They just keep coming. That's not great. Okay, we're going to need to draw something. Crack Arid Mesa. Grab a Plains. Oh, dear. All right. Well, come on. Something to deal with this Onslaught of Goblins, or we're kind of in trouble. That's three down to 13. Lotus Bloom comes down. Core Reality doesn't do much against all these tokens, though. Signet. One, two, three, four. Yeah, all right. Play Signet. Play a planes. I don't even think we play Cruel Reality. It just doesn't do enough. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Opponent plays a land. We need a Curse of Death Hold. Curse of Misfortunes might be too slow now. We're taking one, two, three, four, five, six. What is this? Rabble Master Tribal? <laughs> oh boy, Curse of Death Hold would be so insane. But I mean we haven't we haven't found it. Opponent, combat. Big attack. Yeah, we take a trillion. Well, we got one turn. One turn to draw. Enduring Ideal Curse of Death Hold. Curse of Misfortune is too slow now. I guess our Sphere of Safety would also be relevant. Down to four. Lotus Bloom. And that does it. Well, ha. Huh. Okay. That did not work the way we hoped. Well, bring in Wrath of God. Go down Leyline of Sanctity. Go up, I guess, Sorceress Spyglass. For a ley line of saying, or for rest in peace, and run it like that. Didn't find the right prison pieces, never found a curse of misfortune, and cruel reality, while really good against some decks, not good against the Rabble Master Tribal that just makes a million extra tokens <laughs> every turn. Bone has plenty of free sacrifice fodder. Alright, well, we'll play first. Awkward, awkward, awkward. I think we mulligan, that hand's just so slow. Well, all right. This hand is also slow, but it's keepable. Curse of Exhaustion to the bottom. Eh, gonna have to hope we draw lands. We're really leaning on this Lotus Bloom. And the Lotus Bloom is probably just gonna be casting like Curse of Death Hold, so we really need to top deck lands. Opponent, Gemstone Caverns. Well, exiling an ensnaring bridge. Well, land, swamp, go. Opponent, Ramanon Bruins. And... Let's see that chalice on one. Desperate Ritual. And Blood Moon. Well, that's not good. Chalice on... Okay. Opponent's just running out. Well, we got time. Land? Ghostly Prison. I'll pass the turn. Opponent. We do need to draw lands. Opponent passes. Lotus Bloom taken down. Land. Ley line. Pass the turn. Oh, boy. Well, at least our opponent is also not doing much at the moment. Opponent. Chalice on one. 
Well, we have those in our sideboard. Not really impacting us. Uh, this Chalice on Zero stops our Lotus Bloom, though. So we actually have a lot of lands to go before we can play Magic. Well, that is a Swamp. Pass the turn. Come on, lands! Lands and Signets! That's where we're at. Put it. Gemstone Caverns. Simeon Spirit Guide. Well, that is sort of a clock. Opponent passes. Land. It's a Lotus Bloom. We do have a reasonable number of lands in this deck. We're just not really drawing them. Opponent gets in. Hits us. All right, there's a Plains. So we get to Ghostly Prison. We're slowly, 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 slowly making very slight headway towards where we want to go. Mountain for our opponent. Desperate Ritual. And Hazaret the Fervent. Well, that is an issue. We need to keep drawing things. Opponent passes. That's a Marsh Flats. I'll suspend Lotus Bloom. Yeah, that Chalice on Zero is probably going to beat us. Opponent, combat. Gets in with Hazaret. Pays two. Down to 13. Yup. Passes. Lotus Bloom. Sure. I'll play Sorcerer Spyglass. Name Hazaret, although this doesn't do much because our opponent has a braid. Yeah, I think they got us. Blood Moon isn't that good against us, but that Chalice on Zero was insane. Opponent correctly picked that they should Chalice on Zero, and it worked. Des Ooh, boy, that's a good one. Desperate Ritual allows our opponent to abrade and attack with Hazaret this turn. That is very impressive. Actually, it doesn't with the timing that they did this. So, okay. So we don't get attack this turn, which is something. Opponent, passing. Land, land, land. Lotus Bloom, uselessly ticking down. Oh, boy. We drew a lot of Lotus Blooms into this Chalice on Zero. That is many, many Lotus Blooms. Opponent, top deck's a land which allows them to double attack, and yeah, that is going to do it. Now we're just kind of out of relevant magic cards that chalice on zero that chalice on zero won our opponent the game that was a good one they kept a risky hand so did we we kept a hand that was soft to chalice on zero and yeah this puts us to dead we just turned 10 before we got to five mana well that's not what curses want to do all right against odds time we are playing some Ooh, some uh, enduring curses in modern, and this hand is interesting. Lotus Bloom suspended, Lotus Bloom suspended, Marsh Flats, go. So we don't have that much actual mana in hand, but we will have a bunch of mana. Soul Warden, okay. So Curse of Deathhold seems insane. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of Curse of Misfortunes. Field of Ruin, go. Planes for our opponent. Well, we're counting down these Lotus Blooms to play our Curse of Misfortunes. Or yeah, Champion. Yes, that's fine. That's fine. Opponent gets in for one. Mm hmm. Down to 19. Well, take down our Lotus Blooms. Take down our Lotus Blooms. Draw a Planes past the turn. And we're not that far away from kind of locking this deck. Land for our opponent. Militia Bugler. Okay, so if we draw a land next turn, we can actually double Curse of Misfortune. And then we can just hard lock our opponent. We can get Curse of Deshold and uh, Overwhelming Splendor opponent. Champion, sure, finds it, gets in, hits us. So we actually would not mind to land here. Worst case, we can do it over two turns and save a Lotus Bloom. Down to 17. Untap, take down. Yup, Lotus Bloom. Take down. Lotus Bloom number two. Draw planes. All right, well, uh, crack this. Grab a, hmm. Yeah, let's just grab a Swamp. Crack for Black. Curse of Misfortunes. Enchant our opponent. Crack for Black. Curse of Misfortunes. Enchant our opponent. Pass the turn. And I'm feeling good about where we're at. Unless there's surprise main deck enchantment eight. Oriac Champion. Uh-huh. That's fine. That's fine. Our opponent is about to become very sad. This looks like a turn five curse win. That's not bad. Opponent, yeah. Doing things, making dorks. Well, <laughs> uh, this is pretty much how we drew it up. Noren gets exiled, yup. We don't even really have to do anything the rest of the game. So, curse number one. Yes, please. We will take overwhelming splendor. 
Curse number two, we will take Curse of Deshold. So creatures locked. I mean, I guess we also play Curse of Exhaustion, because why not? And opponent scoops it up, and that is about as cursy as curses can get. That is, that is just perfect. That is exactly what our deck wants to do. Literally exactly what our deck wants to do. All right, so we can go down the two rest in pieces. Go up Greater Oromancy. Go up Wrath of God. Go down Ley Line of Sanctity for Chalice of the Void, I think. And run it like that. Well, so far so good for curses. Uh, this hand... Huh. On the draw, two Rune Talos that we can't cast at the moment. We do have a Chalice on one into maybe Ghostly Prison. Working towards Curse of Death's Hold. Hmm. Uh, well, it's a risky keep. All right, let's keep it. We have a lot of the cards that we want in this matchup. Our mana is just very awkward. Like, Ghostly Prison, Curse of Death's Old Chalice are all very good, and Rune Halo also has potential, so we'll see. And if we draw a land, we can theoretically use Field of Ruin to get another one. Inspiring Vantage. <laughs> Nykthos. All right. Well, Blood Crypt, go. Nykthos is a way away from doing what we want. Opponent Planes. And Oriak Champion. Oh, there's a Planes. Well, let's just Chalice on one. Our mana's working out pretty nicely. Pass the turn. Sacred Foundry. Tapped. And... Ooh, Impact impact Tremors. Okay. Gets in with Oriac Champion. Hmm. <clears throat> play Field of Ruin. Play... Ghostly Prison. Pass the turn. Opponent. Oriac Champion. We can't actually stop the Impact Tremors damage because it doesn't target. Opponent gets in. Hits us. Well, actually, they don't. <laughs> they don't have the mana to pay for our ghostly prison. Arid Mesa. So let's just nick those. Field of Ruin to get another planes. Ruined Halo. On Oriac Champion. Pass the turn. Well, this is going pretty well. Opponent. A Johnny's Pride Mate. Well, that is going to grow. We do have answers for it, though. Ghostly Prison is helping, and we can rune Halo it if we need to. Bone it. Passes. Hmm. One, two, three. Well, I guess we just rune Halo on a Johnny's Pride Mate. Arid Mesa. Crack Arid Mesa. Godless Shrine. Down to 14. Nykthos. Ghostly Prison. And pass the turn. Now we just need our tutoring curse, and we should be able to lock this up. And opponent, we don't even need it, scoops it up, and that was a pretty impressive performance for curses. I mean, feels like a good matchup. Random creature decks don't seem to like uh, like the curses. Game Blood was especially cursey, though. That was a good curse performance. Hmm. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. So what do we learn this week about curses in modern? And overall, we played six matches. We won three of them. Good for a 50% match win percentage, which, eh, I mean, that's fine for in against the odds deck. And really, I don't even know. Like, we didn't play a lot of, like, super close games. It felt like we either just blew people out altogether, not even close, absolutely crushed them, or got blown out. There wasn't much middle ground with Enduring Curses. So, uh, as far as wins, we crushed Soul Sisters, we beat Abzan, and we also managed to take down a Scred deck. On the other hand, we lost to Death Shadow, which actually was a pretty close game. They had a lot of uh, counter spells that ruined our plan, which was brutal. Kind of got blown out by spirits in a game that wasn't that close. And then lost to Mono Red Prison, where they just managed to chalice us out of our mana. And we got stuck with one land, which was a little brutal. So uh, a kind of uneven performance, I guess I would say. The deck is super sweet, though. And it definitely performed better than I thought. I was mostly impressed with the power of the curse locks. Like... 
the curse locks themselves are very effective ways to win the game. Curse of Misfortune, uh, getting various locks was really, really strong, and we got all of our locks at different times. Our deck, it seems especially good at beating creature decks. Not that we're drawing dead against the spell-based decks. We have cards that are good there, especially in our sideboard, but in our main deck too. But against the creature decks, we really feasted, so I don't know. Curse of Misfortunes, there is a downside, and it is a slow card, and that is kind of a punishing aspect. We saw a great example of that against Mono Red Prison, where we had the curse in hand, our opponent had a bunch of like goblins they were attacking us with, and even though we could have played curse, the fact that we have to wait another turn to tutor up our next thing was kind of a deal breaker in that scenario, because that one turn is all our opponent needed to kill us, but the deck, it does some powerful things, so if you're looking to curse people, this is a good way of getting it done, because cards like Overwhelming Splendor, Cruel Reality, and in specific matchups like Curse of Exhaustion, Curse of Desolate, they are very powerful cards. Curse of Thirst close out games surprisingly quickly once it got going. So the deck is very effective at doing what it wants to do, and Curse of Misfortunes is a great way to cheat on mana and get these overwhelming splendors and cruel realities out earlier. Uh, so I don't know. The deck was definitely sweet. I wish there was a Curse of Possibility Storm. That would make the deck so much better. Uh, we wouldn't need as many other ways to fight Ditch Habits, because the nice thing about the creature lock of Overwhelming Splendor and Curse of Desold is both sides are tutorable by Curse of Misfortune. On the other hand, our spell lock, ugh, we can tutor up Curse of Exhaustion, which is good on its own in some matchups, but then we're left trying to find our Possibility Storm or like an Enduring Ideal to find Possibility Storm. So ah, that would be a great option, and I think curses are something that are worth keeping in mind because Wizards, while they haven't come back in standard recently. They have shown up in like commander decks, and they are a reoccurring theme. I, I guess we did get some in Amonkhet, which isn't that long ago. So I expect that we will probably get more curses in the future, and the more curses we get, the better Curse of Misfortune gets. It's one of those cards that it's never really going to get worse, and it's probably slowly going to get better. Will it ever break the modern format? Uh, I mean, probably not. If you got the perfect curse, printed. Maybe it could actually be a semi-tier deck, but for right now, we're still missing a few curses. The Graveyard Hate Curse is really slow, really clunky. Two cards every turn is just not going to cut it when there's other options in the format, so more good utility curses and combo -y curses would go a long way, so fingers crossed that we get more in the future because Curse of Misfortunes was a sweet card. The Curse deck is a super sweet deck, and even though it's decent now, it could end up being really good in the future if we get the right curse. So, anyway, that has been Enduring Curses. That's been our Against the Odds for this week. No poll this week, because next week, it is War of the Spark Time. Special episode, kicking things off. And then next episode, the poll will be back, overflowing with spicy new War of the Spark options. So, I'm hyped. War of the Spark is going to be awesome. Curses were awesome. It's a fun time in the magic world. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.